Do you have an SD card that you suspect is failing? Do you want a way to completely avoid having to rebuild an SD card configuration? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how to do both of these. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to back up and diagnose your Raspberry Pi SD cards. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links available. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button. Thumbs up. Here's what we're going to be covering in this video, and that's how to back up and diagnose your Raspberry Pi SD cards. First and foremost is avoiding an SD card failure. It may not seem like much, but if you just sent through up something like uh, Google TV or Android TV on your Raspberry Pi, you can appreciate the amount of time it took to get the images burned and get the configuration, initial configuration done. So why have to go through that whole process again if you don't have to? The next thing is what we're talking about, the required items. And trust me, you've probably got some of these and can get the rest very easily. We'll talk about backing up your SD cards, and this is where if you have a network tech storage unit, this would be a perfect place to store them, as well as the programs you're going to use to do some of what we're going to show. And then we'll show a couple of examples of diagnosing SD cards. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not too thrilled about having a little $7 or $10, depending on what the size of the SD or micro SD card you're using, of taking down a Raspberry Pi that may be servicing as your firewall, as your ad blocker, something that could, you'll notice it when it goes down. And with SD cards, it's not a matter of if they're going to fail, it's a matter of when. Now, some of this you can mitigate by having a maybe a little better quality SD card. But in the end, I don't really know if it's going to matter that much. And I'll probably get some email from some PR folks at some of the different SD card companies over that statement. But it's just a matter of what's coming down the line that day to a great degree. There's several tools that you're going to need to have to do this, either not necessarily the right way to do it, the way I'm showing you, or at least give you a foundation of which to start from. Main thing is a good USB SD slash micro SD card reader. You want to make sure that this is a USB 3.0 or it supports USB 3.1 and that the port that you're using on your laptop or your desktop also has USB 3.0. That becomes very important in terms of how long it's going to take to back up the SD image and recreate it. Now there's several files that you're going to want to have as a part of this. The starting one is Win32 Disk Imager. Now, if you're on a Mac, then I'll have a link in the description for an equivalent program there. Now, you see me use Blaina Etcher a lot. There's only one problem with Blaina Etcher with the way it ships. It only takes the images and writes them out to the SD card. So you've got to have something that will go in both directions. When you get to testing the micro SD, there's several files to look at. There is uh, H2TestW. There is another one called Check Flash. Although it was primarily meant for USB flash drives, it should work on this. And at least it gives you an idea, both of those, of where you stand. There's one called Chip Genius that is also there. And there's a, you can find a host of these programs out on the internet, but you may find that if you've bought a micro SD card, it may not be what it's representing to be. So this could, in fact, be causing the problem. Do you need to go to that extent? Well, certainly you can always try reformatting the card. That, that's a good first step. Depending on how old the card is, then you may find that the problem may reoccur. Either way, you're still going to need to have a good image to back up from. And that's where starting with either the Win32 disk imager, or if you're on a Mac, it's it's Pi Baker, I think is something like the name that comes to mind. So that is something to keep in mind. Just as a, an added item, have some extra SD cards of several different sizes around so that if you're running, say, 16 gigs on one, 32 or 64 gigs on another Raspberry Pi, that you've always got some backup cards there. Because it's not going to hurt to have them sitting there. Wouldn't you rather have a few dollars spent now and be able to have a supply ready to go versus having to go run to the store or wait for them to be delivered? And I think the answer is you'd rather 
rather have them up front. When you're setting up that new account for the smart home cloud service or device, please get a copy of my smart home device account checklist you see here on the screen. This will help make sure that everything gets written down that you entered to get that account created. The form will also serve as a backup copy when you get this entered into your password manager app. And if you're not already using a password manager app, please get one now and get started. You will be subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist. I won't share, rent, or sell your information to anyone. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to get that SD card backed up. And like I mentioned earlier, especially if you just set your Raspberry Pi up as an Android TV, Google TV, whatever term you want to call it, do you really want to go through having to set all that up again? And I think the answer is going to be no. What we'll do is we'll take the card, put it in the SD reader. Helps if I put it in the right way. And then we make sure you put it you in, in the USB 3 slot because the larger your image is going to be, the less time you want this to take. Now, notice it automatically came up with D drive. Now, never, ever assume that it's picked the right drive. So in this case, it says boot. So we know that's a Raspberry Pi SD card image file. What we're going to do right now is we're going to put it in downloads. But now this is where if you have a network attached storage device that this is going to be an excellent place for that. In fact, all these files that I'm going to, or applications I'm going to show you, that's a heck of a place to put them because that way you can sit there and have those backed up in case you come in with a different computer. You don't have to go running down the applications. You have to reinstall them, but that's minor in the grand scheme of things. So we're going to go here and we're just going to say test SD backup. And then what we're going to do, I'm not going to do any hashing at this point. I'm more concerned about getting it done and at this point you see if it says it read is reads data from device to image file okay so we're going to go from device d to image file and it's important to always check that you're to and you're from or where you want them to be because you might back yourself right out of a operational drive on whatever computer you're running this on so we'll click read and it's this is where if you do it to a network attached storage it is going to take it a little bit longer potentially because you're now going outside of the drive and computer that everything is plugged into keep in mind that's just something to be aware of. How often do you need to do this one? Well, that's a good thought. For example, I've got some work coming up on my Android TV device that I just did. I've got to do some more installations of additional functionality that are going to require doing a factory reset from the menus. And there's the chance that this might come back to haunt me. So I want to be very careful and back up the working config just so that if when I go through the process of adding the functionality I'm going to, that I've got a way to recover back. And that's where once we get this backup done, then we can go through the process of restoring it. Now that you've got the backup done, we can go ahead and click OK to the read successful. So let's go ahead and unplug that and we'll take out our SD card and I've got another one laying here right beside and we'll put it in. Now something to keep in mind when you're doing this you want to make sure that if you can that you're using a USB 3.x port which is 3.0.3.1 but also just as importantly make sure that your SD card reader is USB 3.0.3.1 as well because if you're running a 2.0 usb reader then you've just now throttled back how fast this is going to be able to run and you just want to make sure you minimize any variations you got things set ready to go so we're going to read from the test sd file okay that's fine it's automatically putting the dot image file out there for it and we're going to be going to drive d now we're going to from writing we're going to go to from the image file here that we've just done to the device i know this may seem a bit tedious but trust me once you've done something the wrong way there is no coming back from it in most cases so it's a good choice to do it one step at a time it's going to say you may corrupt it okay that's just a warning that it may have a problem so it's going to take a while to run you can see it's taken where it only took about six minutes to run that now we're looking at about a half hour this is a very good use of time because wouldn't you rather find out now that there's a problem than to do this later than really be in a world hurt? Something to think about is how you name these. What I'm going to be doing is the naming is going to be whatever host it's coming from, say Pi-hole dash the size of the memory card. And then this, this will become a, a important here in just a second. If it's a 16 gig, 32 gig, I'll put like 16 GB dash and the date. 
even though the file date will be out there, I like having the date as a part of the file name. Now, what you ask, why have the size of the SD card on there? Say you're using, for some reason, 8 gig. And 8 gigs are getting harder to find. I can find them, but I have to look for them a little bit longer. If you have the SD card size in it, then that's a good heads up that that's the one you really need to go with to avoid any challenges. Now, if you have to go to a larger card, that's not a problem. But keep in mind that you'll either have to live with having unused capacity or you'll have to go in with something like Gpart to extend the partition table out so that it will be able to use the full size of the drive. Again, not a big deal, but that's a good reason why you want to put the size of the SD card in. That way it gives you a heads up to try to minimize any challenges. Now, this is one of the first things that you'll want to look at if you're having problems is actually starting to test the device. Now, is it valid to try initially reformatting the SD card can't hurt. That may flag some problems there for you. And then you'll have to re-image it off your image you do with Win32 Disk Imager or Pi Baker, depending on how you do this one. The longer you've had an SD card in service, the more you may just be flat dealing with a worn out card. So we'll shift the uh, H2 test W over to English and we will select the target and we'll say boot. And we'll say all available space, or you can only test a certain amount. We can do endless verify. It's giving us a little bit of warning, but that's fine. Go on. It's going to give you an idea if the card is going to be needing to be replaced. And at least says that you know, it's showing that read and write test. That's you know a good indication that it actually is handling input output. Here's another program worth looking at. I'm going to highlight just a couple of them. There's a lot out there, and some of this is going to be you will need to do a little bit of kicking the tires and doing some trial runs to see what's going to work best for you. So we'll go to check flash and we can say use temporary file for the access type, read and write test. You can really give it, a, this is a fairly comprehensive program. Make sure, again, it's going, it's going to the boot drive and it won't let you fortunately select your drive that your computer booted from. Drive is not empty. Complete space test will be impossible. That's fine. See now it's showing you it ran a complete test. It ran one test. If it's a pattern sensitive problem, then that's going to be something that's going to be a lot more involved to find. If you have to start going to that level, maybe you just need to go ahead and replace the drive. You can do burn it. You can do, this will be, it's just going to, you'll stress test the card till it just can't, uh, can't handle anymore. You can do a certain number of cycles, or you can say until first error is found. Drive is not empty, fine. So it's going to keep going until it finds a problem. Now, keep in mind the micro SD cards have a limited write read cycle capability to them. If you go for more than a few minutes and it doesn't show anything, then I would say at that point, reformat it, restore the image and go back on. It could have been just a hiccup in the software. You know, there's any number of possibilities, but that's a good reason why you always want to have a backup of the SD card before the problem happened. At this point in the video, A, thank you for watching it for the entire duration. You've seen several things to be aware of, and these apply to not only if you're running Raspberry Pis, but anything that is using an SD or micro SD card, because whether you're doing big old bones, you, you name the, the single board computer, they're all going to have a commonality with using either micro SDs or SD cards. So knowing how to do a proper image backup, as opposed to just copying the files over, because there may be something else that has been done during the installation that just a straight file copy wouldn't show you. At least this way you would have had an image level or block level backup of the device and then being able to test it. Again, I wouldn't spend hours testing. I would say if you don't see a problem in five to 10 minutes, reformat the card or really just re-image it and that would take care of the formatting for you. And then just go on and watch it. And if it acts up again, get rid of the card, go to a fresh card or just cut your losses at this point and put a new card in service. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.